going to be good. Do you know that say amen? Amen. amen. They're going to run back there and help Kelly because she's probably getting overrun right now. Um, amen. Good singing, folks. Thank you for that. Um, I also want to say that we're glad to, uh, for everybody that's maybe back from sickness, but good to have Brother Joey and his family back with us this morning. He's had some rough times lately and got some more coming up ahead, back problems and stuff. So continue to pray for them and uh, other people that are having uh, Mr. Cook still struggling. Glad to see Miss Cook feeling better today. Amen. Uh, but we're glad that all of you are here this morning. Now, I want to take our Bible, turn to the book of Second Timothy uh, this morning. And this morning I'd like to try to draw you a parallel uh, about this thing about you and our veterans today and also as a parallel for us as soldiers in the Lord's army. Bible said here in 2 Timothy chapter number 2. Um, look at verse number 3. The Apostle Paul writes to the young preacher Timothy and here's what he tells him. He said, Thou therefore endure hardness. Endure hardness. Ain't that right, brother? He's one's got his hunting boots on today, ain't he? Oh, you. <laughs> endure hardness. Good soldier of Jesus Christ. Amen. Look at that verse again. Endure hardness. And life's not always easy. It's fun. It's not a bed of roses. It's not, you don't just get saved and just everything work out great. You never have no problems. You have a nice home, nice family and get rich. That ain't the way it works. Endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. These men that were standing in front of you a few minutes ago were trained by men who have been trained by men who have been trained to be a good soldier. A soldier. We are soldiers in the Lord's army. A little kid saying, I, I'm in the Lord's army. Yes, sir. You know, we say, and we say, uh, onward Christian soldiers marching as to war. Most churches today have no clue in the world what that even is referring to. Now, the Bible said there, look at verse number four. No man that warreth. See that word war in the Bible over 200, around 250 times. The Bible talks about war. No man that warreth entangles himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who hath chosen him to be a soldier. It means we don't get ourselves all tangled up in the jars of this life so that we our goal is to please the one that chose us to be a soldier. I'm proud and thankful this morning that the Lord allowed me to be one of his little soldiers. Not much, but I'm a soldier in God's army. I am preach on the subject war veterans. War veterans. Somebody said that war is God's judgment on sin here. Hell is God's judgment on sin in the hereafter. Closest thing there is to hell on earth is war. Uh, war, uh, they said, somebody said, only the dead have seen the end of war. Sadly, it's true that in 6,000 years of recorded human history, there's been hardly a few years of red peace. They say there's been 15 thousand wars. And, excuse me, ever since Cain knocked Thabel's brains out, men have been fighting. And they keep fighting and keep fighting and keep fighting. And it'll be that way from now. There's at least three big ones in the future. One there in Revelation chapter 6, one in Revelation chapter 19, and then one Re Re Revelation 20, 21 along there when fire comes down out of heaven in that last final battle in the, Bible, in the Bible, in the book of Revelation. So, since Paul wrote that scripture, we have been in a fight. We enjoy the freedoms that we have today because somebody was willing to give up theirs. 
or at least temporarily, physically and spiritually. And, and, and similar, similarly, we enjoy the freedom we have, the Bible we have, the churches we go to, because people have made a spiritual sacrifice for us to know and learn and, and be trained in the Lord's army. We, somebody went before us and done a lot of work that mean you could have what we have here today. Now, we are at war. Somebody said one time, they said, uh, the goal of a soldier is to die for his country. And that's not true. The goal of a soldier is not to die for his country. The real goal of a soldier is to make the other guy die for his country. That's what war is. That sounds awful, and it sounds mean, but that's exactly, I wish it wasn't so, but it is. And we're at the world that war this morning, war-torn world all over this world today. Me and you here are in a spiritual battle. Paul himself was beat. He was put in jail. He stayed a night and a day in the deep, not in a five-star motel. He stayed in, in the water. He was stoned. He was cold. He was freezing. He was frozen. He was beaten with rods and left for dead. That's the battle that the apostle Paul himself fought. The Bible said in Romans 7 and verse 23, we, we, are flesh, we have something inside us that wars. It didn't take, didn't take me long after I got saved. Uh, when I first got saved, you've heard my testimony. I, I went home and I laid down and I thought, wow, this is wonderful. Here I am going to heaven now, not going to hell. I'm going to get to live forever with Jesus in heaven. Man, I felt. And you know, for the first, for the first I don't know, three or four weeks or months, my feet didn't hit the ground. It felt like I was just floating, having the best time ever was. And then it hit me that I was in a war. My, there was something in me still pulling one way, and there's something else in me pulling the other way. Now, that's the fight that you're in. If you're a real Christian this morning, every day, every day, you get up and you got to choose. Am I going to let my flesh have what it wants, or am I going to let my spirit follow the Lord and do what the Lord wants? That's your choice. That's why Paul said, I die daily. You know, there's a man one time, I think the, the group of missionaries come to the Fiji Islands. I know the Fiji Islands, they were cannibals. They were headhunters. They were complete uh, heathen. And they, they'd kill you. They, they, they boil people and ate them. And the missionaries come there, and one of the leaders of, of the country said, uh, you, you do understand that you're risking your life by coming in here like this. You understand you're putting yourself and those with you at risk. If you come here, you could lose your life. And the guy looked at me and said, we died before we got here. And you know what he meant? He said, when we laid it down at the foot of the cross, we said, Lord, whatever you want with my life, I'm dead. I'm a dead man. God, take me and use me however you want to. That's a Christian. That's a Christian. Now, I'm going to make a plea this morning, like they say, for a few good men, uh, women, those that would say, I want to serve in the Lord's army. You, you selfish people will never be much of a soldier in the Lord's army. A soldier can't be selfish. A soldier has to say, I'll do my duty. I'll go beyond, do whatever I got to do to protect my, my land, my house, my wife, my kids, whatever I got to do, and be in God's army. I could take time this morning to talk about the martyrs. We, we talked about them on uh, Memorial Day and things like that. But what I'd like to do for a minute is talk about some great soldiers in God's army. Some of these are still living, and some of them have done gone on. But they were great veterans. I read about the great John Wesley. The great John Wesley, born June 17, 1703. To Susanna Wesley. If you've never heard the name Susanna Wesley. She was, she was a greater soldier than a lot of people are. And raised 17 kids. I think had 19. Raised a bunch of them. And taught them the Bible. And produced two boys. John and Charles Wesley. That literally uh, shook the world for the glory of God. With their hymn writing and their preaching. Let me tell you a little bit about John Wesley. Everybody in here who's a Christian, if you could read, should read the journal of John Wesley. One of the greatest pieces of literature outside of the Bible, Fox's Book of Martyrs, uh, um, uh, Pilgrim's Progress, 
and great books like that. The Journal of John Wesley, they say, may be the most active, busiest life story of a man ever recorded. John Wesley was five feet six and weighed 122 pounds. He traveled in his lifetime 250,000 miles on the back of a horse. Now, I told you last week about me driving 2 million miles. That's in a car with air conditioning and heat and leather seats and, and cruise control. That, that's nothing. The man rode a horse an average of 15 to 20 miles a day, preached two to three times every single day. He formed societies. He opened chapels. He examined and commissioned preachers. He raised funds for schools. He helped the sick. He ran schools and orphanages, plural. He preached 42,000 times, edited 233 volumes of sermons, commentaries, hymns, and a Christian library of over 30 volumes. He wrote 30 books in the meantime, got up at 4 a.m. every single day of his life, never stopped, had a terrible marriage, his wife was not in support of him. They say that John Wesley would stand up to preach and his wife would stand up back in the back and say, you're a liar, John Wesley. You was drunk last night, right in front of the whole crowd. And yet that man kept on and he got on that horse and went to the next town and preached. Went to the next town and preached. And went to the next town and preached. And I mean, nearly, I think nearly 50 years of it. He got up early in the morning you know what he said one day? He said, the world is my parish. He said, "Everybody's uh, uh, nobody's exempt from the gospel. They said when John Wesley was six years old, the house caught on fire, and some of the neighbors come to, to, to get him, rescued little John. He wasn't six years old and pulled him out, and his mom called him a brand plucked from the burning, brother. And uh, John Wesley died, I think he was 80, 86, something like 85, something like that. When he died... The, be the thing John Wesley said before he died was, best of all, God is with us. And right before he left, he said, I'll praise, I'll praise, and was trying to quote a psalm and couldn't get it all out. And then right as he died, he said, farewell, and left this world and went home to the father that he was a soldier for for nearly 50 years. That's a man. Five foot six, 122 pounds, and preached his whole life and burn out for God. Now, you may not feel like that we're in a war this morning. Let me give you some shocking statistics. You realize that in this country, not in Iran or Iraq where they, where they cut your head off, not in one of the, uh, Sudan or somewhere where Christians are being banned, not, not in one of those countries like that. Not in a country where you're not even allowed to. Right here in America, where we still have part of our freedom left. The attacks on churches in American soil are at an all-time high. People never dreamed years ago that you could be having church like we are here today and somebody come running through the, the doors and begin to shoot. I never thought that was possible. We all know that is very possible and happens now. On March the 27th, 2023, just a few months ago in Nashville, a woman who claimed to be a man stormed a private Christian school and murdered three children and three adults. Now listen to this. They kept statistics in the, all these past few years about violent acts and attacks on churches and church property. 2019 saw 12. They skipped 2020 because everything was shut down. 2021 saw 14 attacks on churches. 2022 saw 24 attacks on churches. And from January to March 2023, there have been 69. Over as much as the words the last three or four years put together. Churches have become an attack, an uh, object of the hate 
that we've seen from people who hate God, hate the Bible, hate Christianity. And they, they have a confused picture of what a Christian is. They think we're mean and we're intolerant and we hate people. And they, they don't even understand because the, the media has portrayed us that way. And they, 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 they don't understand. And demonic po uh, powers do this. Not long ago, um, there was uh, an individual uh, on March the 3rd uh, that represented past a bill that, uh, that they didn't like. And uh, a vandal sprayed uh, on the side of a church in Louisville, Kentucky. And then a man, Cameron David Storr, claimed to be a woman. He was a man, thought he was a woman. Uh, burned down a 117-year-old church building in response to, quote, voices in his head. Now, they're talking about that on the mainstream media now. They said, well, they got these voices in their head. And you know what they think? They think they got psychiatric problems and you give them medicine to cure that. Listen, them voices in their head are not a result of being sick. If there's just voices in your head, how come they don't tell them to go bake their neighbor a cake and mow their grass and be good to somebody? If they're crazy. They're more than just crazy. Why would a voice in your head say, Kill somebody, burn a church down. You know as well as I know who them voices in their head are, and it's way the very they've been on the rise for years, uh, years in the last few years. Every year it's increasing more and more and more. Sixty nine of church tax on churches between January and March. Um, there to a larger spiritual battle that we're in, uh, that we're we're living in a time of war. Now, what do me and you do? The Bible said the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. We don't fight our battle with guns and, and knives and stuff. And you, you talk, it's, it's good to have those in case of physical protection. But our battle this morning is spiritual. Our battle is spiritual. We're in a spiritual war, people. We're in a spiritual war. You are The world's against us and everything we believe here this morning. Thank God we've got a Bible. Thank God our great commander has gone before us. And if we go down, we'll go down fighting by the grace of God. All God's people said, David Brainerd, the great missionary David Brainerd to the North American Indians. Lord have mercy. I'm, I'm not a great reader. Y'all know that. But I did read the, the diary of David Brainerd years ago. And you heard me tell that story many times. He went up there to New England. When it snowed that deep, he couldn't even ride his horse. Snow so he had to get off and lead it. And he was inflicted with a sickness. And he was in love with a beautiful young lady who happened to be Jonathan Edwards' daughter. And he said, I've got to go. God's called me up north to be a missionary. And they said, well, this, that ain't no place to take a young, young lady, a young bride like that. And he said, I'll go do my work. When I come back, I'll marry you. Never did make it back. Never did. What a picture of a soldier. They go, listen, that old boy prayed to them Indians and he'd look at them Indians and he'd speak, he couldn't even speak their language. And he'd go down to his knees and pray. And one day he saw tears coming out of one of them's eyes. And the gospel, the Holy Ghost, began to speak to those Indians. And God used David Brainerd to inspire thousands of people to serve God, be a missionary, and be a missionary. And he died when he's 29 years old. 29 years old in the service of his king. And they said he'd get down, he's so sick, he'd cough. He coughed up little look, look, bits of blood, looked like rose petals on the snow, and it was little chunks of his lungs. You know what that boy was? He is a soldier. God give us some soldiers here at Shining Light Baptist Church. God give us some men. You know the world's against manhood now, right? They're trying to feminize every one of us, y'all. Thank God it's time for some men that'll be men. And women will be women. And send them say, by the grace of God, we'll stand for our boys and our grandkids and those that are coming on behind us and be a soldier. William Carey, who was called the father of modern day missions, went to India to preach. Gave his whole life. Time would fail me to tell about all these men. David Livingston, the great missionary, went to the heart of Africa. And they said, was the first, one white man had never been. And David Livingston 
went into the heart of Africa and began to preach. And he had a guy that went with him, and David preached, and he he was gone for years, and finally got to go home and see his wife. And he hadn't saw his wife in years. He said, honey, I love you. I miss you. And she began to hug you. He said, how's everything? She said, I can't even tell you the bad news for the good news I want of how good it is to see you. He turned around and went right back to Africa. And he fought, and he fought, and he fought. I've had, I've had people, heard people say like, what do y'all talk about fighting in a Christian life? You, you're, you're clueless, man. Yeah. If you don't think Christian life's a fight, you ain't living right. It's a fight. Paul said it was a fight. He said, fight the good fight of faith. Fight the good. When he died, you know what he said? I fought a good what? Fight. I, and nobody likes to fight. I don't like to fight. I'll do everything to avoid it. I teach my kids not to fight. Uh, Frankie got to fight the first day of school. Uh, but some, some, they said some kid <laughs> said, it hit him. And I said, now, Frankie, don't ever start a fight. Don't you ever fight. The only reason you're allowed to fight is when you're back to in the corner. You have to, right? That's the way I, that's the way I grew up. And that's, that's what I teach my kids. Don't fight unless you have to. And uh, I don't like it. But brother, we ain't got no choice in this. The devil's, he, we're backed into a corner. We got to fight for what we believe is right. You know, I don't understand. Pretty. You fight your own selfish desires. You fight your own fleshly lust. You fight your own wandering mind. You fight your own selfishness. Every day, you, I've heard people say, Brother Danny, uh, you know, I heard Jack Howells tell that story one time. And, uh, Jack Hiles said he got on an elevator somewhere up in New York City and, and Elvis Presley was on, on the elevator with his bodyguards. He said, I got the chance to witness to Elvis Presley. He said, he said, Mr. Presley, I want to tell you about the gospel. Why don't you, have, have you been saved? And he said, Elvis looked back at him. He said, he said, I got saved in the church of God when I was young. And he said, I tried to live. And he said, what in the world happened? And he said, Elvis Presley looked back at him. It's just what he said. Now, I'm just relating it to you. He said, Elvis Presley looked back at him and he said, I just got tired of fighting. That's what he said. I mean, he said, well, he is a wicked devil. Yes, he sure was. But if he was that good looking, had all that money, you might have trouble fighting too. I'm not taking up for Elvis or anything like that, but you know what he said? He said, look, 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 look. It's a fight. And I just got tired of it. I just give in. We have thousands of people sitting in churches this morning on church pews that you quit fighting a long time ago. You said you're just going to sit right on in with everybody else. Stand up and fight, brother. Stand up and fight. Get you a handful of tracks. Stand for God at work. Speak up for the Lord. Bow your head at lunch and ask the blessing in front of a bunch of heathen and fight. Stand, take your sword and stick it in there once in a while. Don't be a spiritual smart aleck, but I mean, like David Livingston, he, he got a native come, uh, was, was helping him, and an African lion came out and drug him, slung him to the ground, and tore his left arm nearly off. He was like that the rest of his life. He had to learn how to shoot his gun left handed like that because he couldn't hold, hold his arm up like that. And he died in Africa. And they took his heart out. And buried it in Africa. Sent his body back to England. That's a man. That's a man. Ladies and gentlemen, we need some good men like that. We need some good women, soldiers. Well, I, I thank God for uh, women who stood by there in the military and served a lot of good, good ladies who done lots for the soldiers and in the army and, and, and all, all kinds of things. It's like this. You know, I've, I've heard that, that soldiers always take up for their wounded. You know, if you're out here fighting a battle, uh, we've seen the pictures over there in rest area over in Tennessee, and they had these battle pictures on there, and them soldiers coming over, and these over here, and they had guns and swords, and there was dead or wounded soldiers laying everywhere. And you know what them soldiers do? If somebody's wounded, they'll pick them up. That's my buddy. Me and him trained together. I'm not going to leave him here. Some of them soldiers went out of them jungles in Vietnam and everywhere with one of their buddies holding them like air. I'm sure this man right here could tell stories probably. He's got some stories, y'all, and some of you other men that could tell maybe where they said we couldn't leave him. We couldn't leave him, preacher. 
We had to pick him up. We had to pick up our brother. Now look, people. We are in a battle for the Lord. We're, there's casualties everywhere. There's people you stand up and preach. That's out there this morning seeing. There's people that used to say, listen, there's casualties of war all around us. We who are healthy. We who are right with God. We who are trying to serve the Lord. Let's don't forget them that's wounded out there. There's a lot of wounded people out there. Let me just tell you yesterday. Just yesterday. I can go back six months if you want to. Let's just talk about yesterday. We knocked on a door. Man came. He said, can I talk to you? I said, sure. We walked in the trailer, sat down. He looked at me, his eyes were on He said, I got to have serious surgeries on my neck. He said, I'm scared. He said, I'll be honest with you, I'm scared. He's wounded. He said, I know I've been saved. I know I've been, and I talked with him and Pray with him and actually would give him a little bit of money to help go to the doctor. He's a wounded man. He's a wounded man. You can't do that just typing to somebody over the internet saying, you sorry thing, you ought to come to church. That, that's, that's hand-to-hand combat. That's out in the field with the battles raging. We prayed with him and left him. Next house, next trailer. I was a little bit scared to knock on the door because it just it looked it looked rough. And I thought, I don't know about this. And about that time a pit bull is black come around there like that. And come around there, and me and him jumped back, but it was on a chain. I said, Brother, if he breaks that chain sign, I'm gonna be the road runner. But I mean, and he and that thing come around, he's rah! and then a guy came out and said, How you doing? I thought he's gonna cuss us out and run us off. That's what the devil will tell you. And I said, I'm Danny Castle. We're from Shining Light Baptist Church, me and Darren. And he began to break down. He said, I'm having a hard time. He said, my daddy's a preacher. My grandpa's a preacher. And he said, come out here, honey. His sister came out. Listen, ladies. Listen, lady. You want to be a soldier in the Lord's Army? Help some that are wounded. This lady come out. She looked at me. She started crying. She said, I lost my husband two years ago. She said, I lost my son a year ago. My husband died. My son died. She said, my car got stole. I looked at her, no car. I said, how y'all get anywhere? She said, we have to have somebody come get us. She said, the police are supposedly looking for it. They, they can't find it. I thought, how wonderful it would be if we had some Christian soldier ladies that would just go sit and talk to somebody like that. She's crying, y'all. She said, I've been saved. She was crying, ladies. Somebody just go sit and talk to her. Help the wounded out of the battle that they're in. She's too busy for that. Help the wounded. Don't just leave them there. Next house. All these in the same trailer park. Lady laying on the couch. Last time I was there, she's laying on the couch. Time for that, I was there, she's laying on the couch. Can't even get up. And she talked, 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 talked. Talk. We had prayer with her left. Wouldn't that be something if some ladies just say, I'm going to help the wounded. And go, just go over and sit and talk to her for a few minutes. Say, how far is that away, preacher? Five minutes from right here where I stand. Five minutes. Don't forget the wounded. Don't forget the wounded. Pull them out. Listen, if we was down there wounded, we'd want somebody to pull us. If I shot and I was in the war, I sure would appreciate if my buddies helped me up. Don't kick them and say, that's what you get. You should have watched what you're doing. You'd have never got shot. Help them out. We might get shot next. That's what a real soldier does. We need some men who will rise up and take the leadership in the home and set, set their foot down and say, as for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. We need some men who, who don't say Jesus take the wheel. They gave him the wheel a long time ago. And he's the driver. He's not he and our co-pilot. He's driving. We're riding along with him. We need some men who will set the example for the family and read the Bible every day and pray with his family and not let nothing sinful come down. No movies on TV, phone, anything. As for me and my house, we're going to serve God. We need some men who, who will spend some time, more time on some mission work than they do on the 
on dump food or on fishing lines or on the, put some work in ministry in the work of God to teach their family, to set an example, to be a soul winner, to let your kids see you praying. We need some men who will be faithful soldiers. I think of the soldiers that I know. Some dead and gone, some still with us. I thought about the by the Tuggle and the older Tom Tuggle that fought the battle 50 or 60, 65 years. Brother Ted, the Tuggle and Brother Ed McAbee who fought like a warrior for God for 50 years and went home to be with the Lord. Paul Hallifield, my pastor at Nebo, who fought the battle for all those years. Brother Joe Parson, who preached revival and I got saved in, who done gone to heaven. Thank God for warriors like that. Amen. For Brother Utley, 86 years old, who drove all the way here and stood and preached in his pulpit. How gracious he was. Everybody's right about how that message helped them. I, I thought about Dr. Seitler and Sammy Allen. They were done gone home to be with the Lord. Kelly and Mace Jackson and Harold Seitler and Ralph Sexton Sr. and Jr. and Hiles and, and Dr. Rugman and what a soldier he was and Billy Sunday, J. Frank Norris and Bob McCurry who used to come here gone home to be with the Lord and and, and Percy Ray and, and Phil Kidd and, and Ronnie Chavis and these guys, uh, Cody Zorn and Barry Spears and Frankie and all of them. These are soldiers out fighting a battle. God help us to be a soldier too. You know, what, you know what helps me when I get weak and I get tired of fighting? I think of them guys. I think, brother, if they can do it, I knew it. People was a life talking to me about my running. I said, brother, Danny. And I, I divided it up. I didn't run all that one time. I divided it up, but I got it done. And they said, didn't you get tired? My motto is, if Rocky can do it, I can do it. Amen. Ain't that right, sister? Tried to trip me. <laughs> and you know what? I think this. If Brother Ed can do it, I can do it. Amen. If Dr. Siler can do it, I can do it. By the grace of God. Amen. Wonder we have a few good men here this morning. And that's a figure of speech, you know. We need a bunch. Who want to be a soldier? Who'd want to be a soldier? Who'd want to say, when I go home to heaven, I want to be a veteran of war. And I want to say, I fought a good fight. I, I just give up and start getting drunk again, laying out of church. You don't want to be a loser like that. Fight a good fight, friend. Get back in there. Serve God this morning. Let's stand by our heads for prayer, please. Every head bowed, never eyes closed this morning. Our heads are bowed and our eyes are closed. Every head bowed and every eye closed. Miss Desi's come to the piano. Please. She's going to play softly. This is the invitation. We'll not sing. But we're just going to keep our heads bowed in a minute. I'm looking for a few good men here today. Women, boys, and girls. So preacher. I'm going to get in the army. Come on, let's gather around here and pray. Play sit this off, sister. Amen. It's so easy to be selfish. It's so easy to take God's blessings for granted. I just want somebody going to say, I'll be a soldier. Amen. Amen. That's wonderful. Come on. That's wonderful. Thank God. See the altar filling up this morning. I want to be a soldier preacher. I may not be John Wesley, but I won't try. I might not be David Brainerd, but I'm going to give it a try, brother. I'm going to give it a I'm going to hit it a lick. Amen. Amen. I want to be a soldier in the Lord's army. Amen. Amen. You say, preacher, I'm not physically able to even get out. No. You can pray. You can be a prayer warrior. I want to be a soldier in your army to risk whatever we need to for the cause that's greater than all of us. The cause of Christ. I pray now that you bless every single person here today. God, do what ought to be done in every life. Touch every heart this morning. These are on the altar. I pray that you bless them. Give them the desires of the heart. God, give us some soldiers. God, give us some soldiers. Please, Lord. God, give us some men, Lord, and, and women, and boys and girls that will stand for what's right. 
do that that be pleasing in your sight. Have you in our hearts this morning. God, do what ought to be done. Bless Shiny Light Baptist Church. Keep your hand on it. Bless those that are hurting. Lord, those that are casualties out there suffering. Lord, as people we talked to yesterday, bless, thank you. Praise you for what you do now. Oh, we ask it in Jesus' name and for his sake we pray. See, he's still praying this morning. She's playing softly. You do business with the Lord today. You do business with the Lord today. Amen. Amen. Now, several have asked about um, uh, y'all, Mrs. Uh, Helen Gaither. That's Alicia Slaughter's mother. She just passed away the other day. Um, you know, and she's gone home to be with the Lord. Miss Helen was a real blessing. I, I felt the world her. She loved me. I loved her. Uh, she is, she's one of the people that is a joy to have when you're preaching. Oh, man, she backed me up. And uh, I loved her. And uh, as of now, it looks like the funeral is going to be Saturday the 18th at Jing. My wife has, and, and I've got reached out to Brother Mike, so I hope y'all have too. Okay? All right. Everybody right? Everybody straight? Amen. All right. We're going to go. Come back this evening at 6 o'clock. Got some real special things we're going to talk about. Uh, if, the kid, uh, if the kids want to be in the play, we need to get them signed up today. So I'm going to leave a, a sheet down here, and if they want to be in the Christmas play, um, we're going to practice Wednesday night. It's coming Wednesday night. So any of them want to put their name down there, there's little kids, and uh, uh, you'll, you'll, you'll be blessed, okay? All right, let's bow our head and we'll be dismissed in prayer.